Welcome to our lecture online. The next type of simplification, in this case, is what we call rationalizing the denominator. I'm not sure if we could call it simplification, but it's definitely the way we want to handle radicals that appear in the denominator. We simply don't want them there. We want to get rid of them. And there's a, cer a certain technique that we use to get rid of those denominators. It's called rationalizing the denominator. In other words, we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by something so we can get rid of the radical in the denominator. And in this case, we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. Now, typically, that's what we do. Whatever appears on the denominator, we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by that very same thing. When we do that, we get the following. So here, we get in the numerator 2 times the square root of 3, and in the denominator, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is simply equal to 3. And so that's how we get rid of that radical in the denominator. Well, we do the same over here. We're going to multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 5x. Again, we simply duplicate what we have in the denominator. We do it twice. So this becomes equal to x times the square root of 5x divided by the product of these two. Well, we take the square root of 5 uh, 5x quantity squared, because essentially that's what we're doing here. We're taking the square root of 5x times 5x, and of course when we take the square root of something squared, that simply pops out, so this is equal to x times the square root of 5x divided by 5x. And then you realize that x's cancel out, so this is equal to the square root of 5x divided by 5. So here, the same thing again. You can begin to see the pattern. Whenever we have a radical in the denominator, we simply multiply the numerator and the denominator by what's inside the denominator. Simply multiply both sides by the square root of 7x. Of course, the denominator becomes 7x, and the numerator becomes x squared times the square root of 7x. In the denominator, we get 7 times x. And now this x cancels out one of those, so this becomes x times the square root of 7x divided by 7. And here we have the cube root of something. Now that makes it a little bit more challenging. What do we need to multiply the denominator by so that the power of the x becomes the same as the root? And in this case, it will be equal to the cube root of x to the first power, not x to the second power. So notice here, we don't multiply times the very same thing that we have over here. Now that we do this, we, of course we need to do the same with the numerator. Now when we look at the denominator, well first let's multiply out the numerator, 2 times the cube root of x divided by, here we get the cube root of x squared times x, and notice that becomes x cubed. So this is equal to 2 times the cube root of x divided by the cube root of x cubed. And of course if the root equals the power, that simply cancels out, so this becomes 2 times the cube root of x in the numerator divided by simply x in the denominator. So that's how you simplify when you have a root other than a square root. You make sure that when you multiply the denominator by whatever you multiply with, that this will give you something that will eliminate the radical in the denominator. And that is how it's done.